Hi, this is Dr. Wallach, and uh, this is a quick tutorial on how to get a headphone bus set up in our studio using Logic Pro. Uh, hopefully this will help you with your project if you want to have uh, click tracks for your musicians or just want, simply want to monitor backing tracks if you've got a singer. Uh, so let's get started. In the booth, uh, actually this rack that's over in the corner that you've been using for patching in microphones, uh, this time though you're going to use the headphones. So you need to make sure if you're looking at the this on switch over here, you need to make sure this is on. The microphones will work without this on switch, but the headphone amp will not. So looking back out, this gray box that you see just below the power distribution center, that's actually our headphone distribution amp. What it allows you to do is feed in one stereo signal and connect up to six headphones at the same time, all listening to the same headphone signal. So uh, first thing you need to realize is there's actually going to be two places to change the level overall. First there's this uh, knob all the way to the left that changes the overall level so that I can turn the, the level up and down overall for all of the headphones if you want to raise or lower those levels. And then as you connect your six different headphones, each one has its own uh, volume knob as well. So that's the volume knob that you use for those individual headphones. You can use this if you've got several musicians in the booth and one thinks it's too loud, one thinks that it's too soft. You can actually control those individual levels as you connect them to the different inputs. So now the question is what to put uh, through those headphones. So if you've got your session set up, you might have gotten in the habit of actually turning off your click track because it's coming through the monitors and it's not really useful when you're hearing things uh, there. But this click track can actually be pretty useful going through the headphones for your musicians. So the way you actually send it to the headphones is first going over to the file, project settings, metronome is the option that's going to bring up this window here and down here at the bottom is actually where you send it to a very uh, variety of outputs okay in our studio the ones that actually go to the headphone amp are this 9 and 10 so again the option right down here at the bottom uh, once you do that you should be able to hook your headphones into the distribution amp in the booth and hear the click track okay before I leave talking about the click track, there's actually a few other options here in this window. One, you can turn off uh, clicking when recording or playing. And also down here, you actually have the audio click. You have, um, where it says audio click, you have the option to change which pitch and uh, what velocity it's at. So you actually can change quite a bit how your click track sounds, including adding in subdivisions of the beat. So there's actually a, quite a bit of options here to, to customize the click track to your liking. Okay. Um, but click track is not the only thing you can send. You can actually send one of your regular tracks through that headphone bus, okay, but if you know what you're doing here. First off, so take one of this, this example of these uh, percussion tracks that I have in this session, okay. I first want to create a new track and I'm going to create a new audio track and instead of selecting one of the inputs from the audio interface, I'm going to click down to the bottom and choose a bus that is doesn't have a name associated with it that'll basically give you a new bus, okay. And then for the output, you want to choose the same outputs that we had before that I showed you in, in the click track window. If you click on it and go to output 9 and 10 again is the one that goes to the headphone amp inside the uh, booth, okay. Uh, that's going to set up an audio bus and in order to keep yourself organized I advise clicking on the, the name of the track here and actually renaming it so just double click and it should allow you to just change the name to something like headphones or headphones in the booth, okay. Um, but the corresponding track is going to show up here inside your session, okay. Uh, and if you look, uh, there's a couple different options. For some reason these other buses get set up. Uh, I'd go ahead and disable those just by clicking the little power button, okay. You want to have a good clean signal going into your uh, bus, okay. Okay. Now go back to your other audio tracks or MIDI tracks, okay, and where it says send, if you click and choose the bus option, scroll down to the same number that you set up the headphone bus, it's now going to create a connection between this track and the headphone track, okay. There's a couple different options here, but whether you want it to be post pan or post fader or pre fader, I recommend just leaving it post pan. Uh, and then you can just click and drag on this little knob and it should allow you to raise the level. It's basically just sending a little bit of an audio feed over to your bus track. So if you click back on your bus track, you'll see that there's audio now going through that, okay? You can repeat the process with whatever tracks you want, whether they be MIDI or audio. Just go back in here where it says send, choose the bus, choose the bus number, okay? And then just click and drag this little knob here and to raise the level. Now that you've got everything set up in Logic, you're okay to go ahead and connect some headphones and you should hear some signal coming out here. Um, and I recommend closed headphones if you've got several musicians in the booth at the same time so that they don't hear uh, what's going on between them. Uh, or if you want to make sure that they're monitoring just what's coming from the recording versus what's coming from the just the acoustic environment inside the booth. Uh, the other reason for using closed headphones is it you have less leakage coming out of the headphones potentially going into your microphones that you're trying to record with. Uh, so one thing's 
I've noticed with either earbuds or with open uh, uh, headphones is that you'll hear actually the sound coming from the headphones leaking into your microphones. Closed headphones help you solve some of that uh, scenario. Um, don't forget that you've got two different places where you can change the level here and you're going to have to play with both of these to make sure that you've got a good clean signal that it's not distorting. Uh, notice you've got some red overload lights there that will tell you if you've got distort distortion coming on the input side of things but you also need to make sure you turn up the volume at your individual headphone that you're using. If you have a set of headphones that just has an eighth inch plug you're going to need an adapter like this one. Make sure it's one that has a tip ring sleeve configuration as you can see here that's going to allow you to adapt from an eighth inch plug to a quarter inch uh, stereo plug. Uh, we have several of these in the studio but they tend to disappear from time to time as people forget that they're connected to their headphones or if they just simply take them. Uh, they tend to disappear and it's not a high priority for me to replenish these but uh, it's a good idea that if you have an eighth inch set of headphones uh, go ahead and get one of these. You can get them at Radio Shack or whatever and uh, pick them up uh, so that you have them for your headphones. The same process goes for actually connecting to a speaker output and if you look on the, the rack you'll actually see here on the right hand side there's a few outputs on the XLR patch bay uh, that are labeled as outputs. These actually can come from the DAW and you can send a signal to a speaker if you want to have uh, monitoring coming through the speaker for your musicians in the booth uh, or if you want to do some uh, reamping. This is a good way to do reamping because you've got an output coming from the DAW right into the booth via an XLR. XLR output and to connect this in logic really the only difference in the setup is what you select for your output so before we were picking 9 and 10 the difference is that for the speaker outputs the out 1 and 2 that are on the patch bay you're going to just choose output 7 and 8 inside of logic that should start sending signal to your speaker so that's a quick introduction to using the headphones in the booth. This should be useful to use. You bring musicians in to record them. You can send them a click track so they can stay in tempo. You can send them a recording of other instruments that are in the session so they can hear them. You can also send them their own signal from their track. Uh, again, just a matter of adding the bus and sending it into the booth.